Depo. Today I'm with uh, Maria Rosa Moroso. She is uh, from the NATO Communication and Information Agency and she will uh, today give us the first lesson of this course. The lesson calls a strategic view of social media and uh, she wants to share with us just a few definitions as an introduction and then I will pass her the microphone to answer the first question what is the social age? Today's social age is driven by bi and multidirectional interaction. So a social centric internet enabled by the web 2.0 technologies or even web 3.0 technologies for that matter, higher bandwidth capacity and easily accessible new media. So web users today want to be active contributors, benefiting from the inputs of other contributors. Web users today want to speak out about their opinions and know about other opinions as well and rate and rank products. I mean, you know it yourself. If you have to book a hotel room, you would do it through a, 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 a website. Let's say that you go to hotel bookings and you are booking a hotel. I believe many of you start looking at the ratings of other users before you even make your final reservation. And it's the same on Amazon. If you buy a book, you go and you read the reviews of, our, of others. And it's the same with social, sort of our social media engagement. We have to be ready to interact with our audiences. So, for example, jo Josh Burnoff states that the main mistake made by businesses and organizations when entering the social world is not to really know their objective with the social initiative. So, the social engagement starts backwards by first using the tool without a proper strategy. Brian Solis, on the other hand, states in his PR blog, Social media is about sociology and less about technology. As a matter of fact, the technological barrier of entry is so low that anyone who can use Microsoft Word or any other Microsoft um, um, functionality can use these social media platforms. They are intuitive, user-friendly, and again, why? Because they are created by the users. This is Brian Solis's conversion prism is called. It gives a good whole view of the social media universe that we are talking about. This prism is being updated approximately every three months. So I would encourage you to go there and look. The prism is categorized and also organized by how people use the different platforms. This, use, you, uh, this universe is very, very dynamic with new sites being born and die and die every day. Back in 2010, the social media marketing report stated that 67% of marketers plan to increase their social media channels, including blog, Twitter, Facebook, etc., etc. If you read the report that we have added to the resources in 2030, states that 97% of marketers have a social media engagement. This is pretty remarkable figures that you have to keep in mind in the back of your head. Your final strategic intent should be for the organization to be an integrated part of the social media community and engage in appropriate conversations as to enable a long-standing relationship management and systematic and consistent build the reputation of the organization. If we start looking at social media should be the organization's long-term commitment and not just its ransom campaign or marketing gimmick jumped into because everyone is doing so or because this and that commander did so. And I see that you have brought some figures to illustrate the importance of social media. Let's have a look at them. It's uh, quite amazing to see the importance of these main uh, social media platforms and also uh, how much social media are used in our countries. Um, could you now tell you a little about strategy because this is the main topic of this lesson. 
no matter which um, uh, strategic framework we look at, that being the Forester's Post model or the Ross Dawson model or again the Steve Sponders model, you, you will notice that no matter which model you use, what stands high in the priority order are the objectives. Whereas technology is being addressed very late in your strategic thinking. For our NATO purpose, I've personally chosen the Des Walsh model. And this is Mr. Des Walsh. And he's one of the world's most famous social media strategists. His strategy is based upon nine points. And here we talk about committion, we talk about culture, and in our case we talk about organizational culture. We talk about market, these are marketing terms. It's obviously translated into NATO terms. We talk about stakeholder environment. We talk about goals, resources, listening, engaging, and these are two very, very important points that I will address specifically. Technology and evaluation that in our terms we call measurement. To help the strategic thinking, it is useful to just start simply by brainstorming around three simple questions. The first one, what is the specific organizational need that social media can help meet? So what can social media help me meet? The next one is, how many hours a week do we believe we need to spend on social media activities? And here again, it's about resources. How much time can we afford spending on this initiative? Because as said, social media will take a lot in resources. It will not cost a lot in technology. It will not cost a lot in technology. It will cost a lot in resources and time. And the third thinking point is, what do we believe can go wrong? So what can go wrong? That's your risk assessment, because things will go wrong. You will have negative comments. You will even have ugly comments. But this has to be part of your strategy and it has to be part of your risk assessment. And we will address it further on. This bridges us directly into the very, very first issue that you will have to deal with. And by the way, a well thought of social media strategy will help you with this one because you will need the upper management or commands dedicated commitment. So to assure a successful strategy development and implementation, you need the high-level organizational long-standing commitment. It's upper management has to endorse the steps towards a proper social media strategy away from the experimentation page. They have to endorse not only the one initial stage, but the long-standing and coordinated social media effort. And we'll talk about more about coordination because we have to move away. In order to be successful on social media, you have to move away from the stovepipe social media engagement. And you have to be ready to commit in the long-standing view. By saying this, organizational leaders have to commit on becoming social, not only doing social. So away from simply using social media platforms to replicate other already approved communication products, but to engage in an online dialogue aimed at helping the organization meet its strategic objectives. Obviously, whatever kind of engagement we have on social media, it has to reflect who we are. And this bridges us naturally to our next topic, the culture. When we talk about culture, as already mentioned, when conversation starts around social media, people tend to talk about tools instead of addressing the question around the objective of the organization and the strategy to meet those objectives. And most importantly, the right kind of social media engagement to match the organizational culture. For example, NATO is a serious business. So nobody would expect NATO and NATO's social media engagement to be frivolous or funny. So that does not mean that our a NATO social media engagement has to be boring or dull, but it should not concentrate on triggering engagement by being funny, as that would not match our culture and that 
we would not be expected to do that. It is common knowledge that the toughest challenge in social media and its implementation is not about platform or tool, but it's again, like in any change, it's about culture. So again, when we engage, when we outline our strategy, yes, think outside the box, but also think, who are we and what do we want to represent? Other, inf other important information to, to, to keep in mind in this mix is uh, which is the style of our leadership? How, do, how are decisions communicated? And how do segments, department and offices relate to one another inside the organization? And here again, for us, it's really, really important because we have a hierarchical structure when it comes to conveying information, when it comes to communicating to the broader community. And your strategy initially has to reflect that. In later stage, it will evolve, it will change. And for example, there are many examples where social media has actually um, has actually proven um, to change the internal culture. And by this, I can say that there are different tips and tricks, but whenever you make your internal audience aware of your social media engagement, by example, showing them what are we tweeting out there. And I have the link prepared on my PC, but obviously then Serge would have to give me access again so I can show it to you. But if you go to visible tweets, for example, Serge, and you write in hashtag NATO, comma, hashtag, for example, ISAF, you will show an online completely free tool, comma, hashtag NATO. You need a space between the comma and the hashtag because if not, it won't recognize it as too different. And you go to go. And you will see, this is just one way of showing your internal community what you are doing around two simply simple hashtags. But let's say that for our purpose now, we are doing this um, NATO, um, SMM, SM for NATO. We could actually add add that as a visual, visual hashtag and we can show it inside our organization. We can have li live tweets on monitors or even on our intranet to make our internal stakeholders um, aware of our social media engagement. And these are tricks and IBM has been a, um, a prime example, they have transformed their organization from being a pretty hierarchical, top-down structured organization into becoming a very, very social organization. It has taken them 10 years. But for example, IBM is the example where each IBMer is an online ambassador for IBM. They have full authority to talk on behalf of IBM, but it has taken them time this will not happen overnight, but it can happen to us as well. And again, these streams can help you change the internal culture. So obviously, once we know who we are and what we're addressing, we need to know who are we addressing. And this bridges us over to the stakeholder environment. Who are our stakeholders? Who are we addressing? How do they use social media and how do they use the different platforms? Just as for any strategy, we need to understand who they are. And due to the enormous geographical and social reach of social media, many believe that segmenting and targeting specific audiences is not possible. And maybe that is a little bit true if we consider the traditional segmentation of audiences. But if we look at behaviors on social media, it is very possible to target the audiences we want. The major platforms provide their own targeting analysis, and that can obviously be used. For our social media strategy, we need to build a picture of our audience's real or potential online behavior, and especially whether or how they make use of social networks. That's another thing. 
For example, latest statistics show that the fastest growing generation on social media is the age group between 50 and 64. And why? Because they want to connect to their geographically distant grandchildren. Their driver is pretty simple. But that means that they will also be reached by any kind of social media campaign or engagement that any organization or firm has. So they are now our potential reach. But it's also uh, important to understand how people behave differently on the different platforms. For example, the same person will behave differently whether he's engaging on LinkedIn versus whether he's engaging on Facebook. On the first platform, he's tuned into professional dialogue while he on Facebook is in engaging in a more private or personal capacity. This is why replicating as many organizations and many companies also do, that replicating the same content onto different platform hardly has the desired effect. We need to provide people with the right level of engagement and the right communication mix depending on which type of dialogue we're engaging in. So, one example, I've put a little link to a new platform called TikToking. This is the result of a private person not finding the right subject matter expertise dialogue on any existing platform. So, he pushed him to develop his own platform, which is worth trying, by the way. It's very, very interesting. Less known, but very, very interesting if you want to talk with other think tankers on specific specific subject matter expertise issues. So again, we can reach a lot of audiences and we need to understand which audiences engage what. Again, I would always refer you back to the Brian Solis' prism. It gives you a big flavor on who engages where. So again, we know who our stakeholders are, we know our internal culture, now we come to probably the most important part in your social media strategy. The goals approach should not be to see the social media initiative as a large, large megaphone. It is important to have clear goals. Clear goals on how the social media engagement can help your organization reach the organizational objective. But still, we need to keep focus on the fact that the social media is interactive. The stakeholders can now not only be heard, but they can be heard by the many. They can make a positive or negative impact on our image. So this bounds us to, be, to readiness. We have to be ready to adjust our strategy as fast as comments or other engagements come in. We may have a strategy that we believe is the right one, but we need to adjust it, and that is why. But never stop keeping focus on what can social media do to help you. And again, all these objectives need to be measurable, but they need to be measurable in social media terms. So I have just put up a few examples of what we can talk about from a native body or organizational perspective where we cannot really talk about return on investment goals or revenue or financial benefit. We need to be talking about awareness, reputation, relationship. But if we look inwards, we need to talk about internal communication, cross-departmental and NATO-wide collaboration. This is where we could keep focus. These are not, this is absolutely not an exhaustive list. It's just an initial. It's, it's, it's uh, food for thoughts. But list, this leads us to the next point. In order to keep focus on the goals, we need resources. And next slide will show you that it is true that tools 
will cost nothing or little, but implementing a powerful social media strategy will cost the organization in form of dedicated resources. It will take time to build the organizational present on the social web, responding to feedback and so on. And this is a challenge. This is a challenge because so far I've never heard of one communication office which has an abundance of staff. So, we can talk about hiring external consultants, we can talk about taking in help, etc., etc. I would actually start rethinking this kind of, uh, of who are our real communicators, whom, who are our best supporters. It's normally our staff. So, we need to start finding willing people throughout our, our organization to support us in our online engagement. That is, if we start engaging on LinkedIn in subject matter expertise discussions, we need our subject matter experts to, to be encouraged and empowered to work on behalf of the organization. And this is obviously difficult in our world. But with the speed of social media, with the reach, with the enormous, enormous potential that social media presents, we need to rethink communication as we started off this, this lecture. We need to start thinking, who are the people within my organization who can help me reach out to the broadest audience? Those could be also HR professionals to talk on LinkedIn about opportunities. It's all about reputation building and less about pure megaphone communication. And again, in order for us to talk and engage, like in any other thing, this bridges us to next slide where we talk about listening. And I mean, as stated, uh, not the least by our ASG PDD, Kolinda gravar Kitarovic, to listen is as important factor in communication. And I would say, to listen is as important on the online engagement as it is in our live engagement. I mean, first we listen, then we have something to say. And it's the same on social media, with the beauty that social media is there the whole time. And if you look at the, at the live engagement, you should be ev everywhere and always in order to capture everybody's conversations. On social media, you have online technology helping you to listen, if we want to call it that way. You can use Google Alerts, you can use readers and feed readers, you can use RSS, a really simple syndication. Um, and after the death of Google Reader, you have new alternatives such as Feedly, DigReader, OwlReader, Newsblur, etc., etc., to help you capture the news on certain topics, people's comments on certain topics, and website talking about what you're interested in listening to. And again, the same online. Twitter, you use the hashtag to follow the conversations that you want. You follow people and you follow discussions. This is how you listen. So obviously, social media gives you an advantage on the listening part. And again, once you have listened, you have to start engaging. And then when we talk about engagement, if your fo strategy focuses on creating a space in conversation rather than engaging in other conversation, your reputation as a social media player very much depends on how you participate in conversations of others. And again, you have small, simple golden rules in social media where you talk about the 2080 rule. In your, your social media strategy should actually have 80% of your time should be about listening and engaging in other stakeholders' conversation. That is really how you win on the social media reputation. 20% is about posting your unique content. It's about telling your story. But you can tell your story while engaging in other conversations. You don't need to lead all conversation. It's like being at a cocktail party and you walk in and you just talk, 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 like I'm doing right now, for example. But obviously, you get a little bit boring. People want you 
to engage with them. And it's the same as if you throw a party. So if you have been invited to parties over and over again, and you have always declined these parties, then all of a sudden, three years down the road, you decide to throw your own party. You will not have many coming to that party if you have not been going to their parties. And it's the same online. It's real, a pure reflection of the real life. This takes us now. Now you know who your resources are. You know what you want to achieve. You know how you can reflect your organizational culture. You know who your audience is. You have been listening. You have been engaging. Now you start looking at the right platforms. Which is the most appropriate platform for my engagement? So the fact that the T comes last in the POST acronym is deliberate. It shows the order of priority. Technology comes last in your strategy. Before we start using platform, we need to define who are the people we want to connect with and which are our objectives. The rest will come. I refer you to the Brian Solis's prism. Go and look at it. It's a wealth of information and it's updated on a recurrent basis. As a, a conclusion of your social media strategy, I, was also, I would also advise you to always keep in mind that you have set your objectives, you know what you reach, but you need to measure all of this. And obviously, you have plenty of ways to measure this. But um, they will just give you a big set of numbers, figures and data. So keep it simple and keep it smart to start with. You can always become more advanced. So once you have your full flavored strategy, you have your platforms talking to one another, you're backlinking to all your online engagement. So let's say you have everything based on a web page. You, um, uh, every time you make a new post or a news alert on your web page, you also have a tweet about that specific posting. That tweet will um, link back to your website. You will also have a replication, but in a different format for your Facebook environment. You will have yet another flavor of it to maybe your YouTube, where you only show a video of that specific article that you have posted. And maybe a third is on your LinkedIn, where you have a little more in-depth analysis of one aspect of that specific article. And maybe a subject matter expertise discussion on that, that specific subject. But I mean, all of this comes together. But how do you measure success? So again, reputation by how many positive comments you get, by backlinks to your home page, uh, from a search engine, a CEO search engine optimization aspect. You can look at how many search hits are you getting on either your organizational name or to the specific news article, and so on and so forth. So again, once you have done, we have been talking about, uh, here you can see a list of some examples. I mean, there are so many of them, and only the red ones here are for pay. All the rest is free, and it's freely available out there for you. You also have the specific platforms themselves that will give you some kind of basic analysis of your web engagement. So, oh, for example, I, I just gave you an example of the measurements that you could do. So if you look at the goals for a NATO, build awareness and positive sentiments, and if I say what measure NATO's online reputation, where the sentiments around NATO are improving or deteriorating, and how centrally broad scale continuous analysis on the amount of tone of engagement, and then you can have locally specific monitoring of web traffic downloads, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, on each that NATO engagement online. But this is just one example to give you a flavor of what we can measure by using social media. And again, as I said, social media should have two additional doc documents. One is your tactical plan. And this is actually going into the specifics of your social media strategy. It gives you the time, the, the dedicated platforms. It gives you sort of a simplified version 
but a more tactical version of your strategy. And then obviously your social media policy or the code of conduct. I will not address this because this will be addressed um, later on. What I will do here, I will use the last moments just to show you two examples of really successful social media strategies, strategies that are available out there. The first one is um, the IDF's social media presence. So they have a full flavored, very interesting social media presence. And the leader of this social media effort is, a, is an officer, um, an Israeli female officer called Avital Lebovic. And she leads a 35-person social media team for the Israeli military. So the Israeli IDF uh, now probably have the biggest social media presence of any military worldwide. If we look at the in only, only, only at the English, English language presence, the IDF presence is growing constantly. And the aim is to reach 95 million people worldwide. That's their aim. And they have, they have a pretty simple strategy. And it's outlined in just a few words. They want to friend of a friend sharing strategy. And it's simple. If you agree, Israel have the right to self-defense. So, if you agree with that, you share. This is a simple but very, very effective strategy. It's not a complicated narrative, and it's understandable by everybody. How is it built up? So, currently, just to speak numbers, their Twitter account has more than 230,000 followers, and its Facebook page just crossed 380. So normally in a live environment, I would start looking at all these webs and show you how they all interact and link. But just to tell you that their primary web presence is the blog, not their web page. Um, they uh, communicate in different languages and they take help. They take a lot of outside help. So for example, the Office of Israel's Prime Minister minister has taken university students to help post pro-government messages and help this IDF effort as well. On the YouTube channel they will, uh, they will in the same moment post um, or share a, a YouTube video of a related topic and on their Facebook they will start engaging in a conversation with, the, with their community on Facebook on what do they believe on certain aspects of that specific blog. This is a full flavored strategy. They have left nothing to the chance and obviously it has backflashed. It's not, it's not that it's completely, it has back, backflashed several times. So now to another player on the social media. So those of you that did not believe that the Taliban had a strategy with their online engagement, uh, you are wrong. They have a very simple, again, the narrative is very simple, very easy. And it has been, it has been pronounced in a BBC article. They say they have a strategy of winning the hearts and mind of Muslim youth, youth through social media. They have said clearly, praise be to Allah, I use computers and I have accounts on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. So obviously the Islamic Emirates of Afghanistan, the Taliban's shadow government in the country, they operate a network of website and social media accounts to connect with potential jihadists. What they want to do, they just want to advance the course of global jihad using whatever means they have. So most of these websites and social media accounts are host hosted in foreign countries such as Malaysia, Singapore, but also in the United States of America. Obviously in recent years several sites have been uh, hacked by foreign intelligence agency, but they magically reappear in another format just a few hours later. You will see that their presence is full flavored as well. 
they have they have a full uh, web present presence based on a landing page so they don't use the blog version as the Israelis but they use a full flavored landing page in different languages and it's the same content but just in different languages they have a sea of Twitter accounts so obviously uh, some of them are just using these um, figures that do not really have a person behind them and one is and the most the most um, vocal one is Abba Balki and uh, next slide will show you just from yesterday I think I made a snapshot of it but we can also go live should you wish to and you will see they do the same they just hammer one single message everywhere and they hammer the message that we are strong we are the lions and the United States of America and the allied countries are the enemy they are the devil it's a simple one but you know what they already have their followers so they only need to reinforce that message and another thing that plays in their advantage is the fact that they are not bound to any code of conduct they are not bound to tell the truth and that is our dilemma because we have to be responsive we have to be fast in counteracting whatever comes up there and it's really difficult for us because we have an uneven battle going on and obviously they will spread whatever come to their mind in order to reach their strategic objective and that is to make the Western world primarily the United States but also the allied country look bad and to reinforce the message that they are powerful and they are strong and I mean it has happened it has happened in 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 war zone it has happened everywhere where um, completely legitimate um, offense have been transformed into for example the United States shooting people in praying position while well, that was absolutely not the case they had been um, uh, they had been um, seeing an arms cache they had um, um, potentially there was an airstrike they, they, they defeated the soldiers many many were killed and then the, the, the allied troops retreated the um, the locals went in they repositioned the body they made all the remnants of any um, um, defensive forces disappear so it appeared as if they had been killed while praying and obviously it takes sort of our hierarchical way of approving release of footage it would take us up to two to three days to um, go back and be able to rectify that erroneous but then the damage is already done and this is something that we in social media need to start thinking of how can we rethink our internal layers of approval in order to become more responsive on social media and again with a full flavored well thought of strategy that you this can be helped so again you will notice that also the um, the Afghans they have or the Afghans the Taliban's in this case because it's not the friendly forces we're talking about here they have a full flavored online presence they use their landing page which is a normal home page in different languages they use Twitter account they use Google free picture sharing they use the YouTube channel they have Facebook accounts and these are just a few of them they use the old-fashioned document sharing website script.com they have coll collaboration tools on just box.com they have free digital libraries etc etc and I have uh, in the resources you will find a pretty good article on how all of this comes together and how they are leveraging it so with this I thank you for this attention it has been a very peculiar experience for me not being able to see my audience not being able to interact with my audience
Thank you so much, um, Maria Rosa, for your contribution to this course. And I uh, remind all the participants that they can keep on discussing this lesson on the forum and they can also interact with you through the forum or through the social media. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.